I'm here with Rakesh. How's it going? Founder of Falco E-Motors. I've done a couple of reviews on these bikes. Uh, it's really interesting because you've got pedal assist, you've got torque sensing, you've got throttle modes, and they can work with your own battery pack if you want. That's but of, right. of course, you've also got that really nice down tube mounted battery. But the beauty of all of this, in addition to the hardware, is that you supply some really cool software that lets people and of course shops that configure these, go in and, and change some of the settings and right. in fact dial in how the motor performs and right. perhaps update the, the firmware yeah. as, as your systems evolve. So we were looking at this earlier and I just wanted to give a quick overview. This is the, the software once it's launched. We're on a PC, but if you have a Mac, you could use like Parallels yeah. or Boot Camp, so you could yeah. use it there as yeah. well, which yeah. is kind of neat. There's a shop mode, right, where you create a profile and then you can actually number the motors so that you can keep your customer separate. But for me, you know, for like an end user, it's just you go into the demo mode, right? There we go, demo. And it will launch a screen that basically lets you connect with the motor wirelessly. So this little USB stick, I think you, you said what was, how much was that? Uh, $49. 49 bucks, a... okay. So yeah, yeah 50 bucks, and does that come with the software too? Yeah, the, the demo? software can be downloaded from our website. Okay, sweet. So yeah, you basically, you know, this bike is all about wireless. It's pretty cool. We've got the laptop here. We've got the USB stick. You turn the bike on like this, and then you're able to connect to it in demo mode. So connect. Go. And then you can select the motor. So that's the HX500 yep. that we're connecting with. Connect. And then what it's doing right now is is searching for that signal. Is there like a, a range that we have to be within? Uh, you can, we have been able to connect up to 10 feet. 10 feet you know, yeah. uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a good range. Sweet. So now what you do is you go here and then this is where you basically start, right? And this is when it, and this is, it's, it's linked up. Um, essentially, it is linked up to this speedy bike here, which is 39 volts here. So mm. now, once it's linked up, you know it's 39 volts here, and now you can actually control the whole motor using this. This is your console now, mm. right? Cool. So you, it has got all the functionality. It has got the cruise. It has got the turbo mode. Uh, sorry, I'm saying it. This is this is cruise. This is turbo. Then you got plus minus. You got a lock option. So all the functionality of the console is right here. Very cool. Right, so you could you could essentially control the motor using this console here. Hmm. And this and is for diagnostics. So this is the console. Um, I guess at the top, if we wanted, would we would we go up here to motor parameters? Yes. And this is what, yeah, this is the first thing we looked at. It was really neat because you can actually change from from like high speed configuration to a high torque configuration if you're climbing. And you can also change the... Uh, torque sensor so that it, it can either be really sensitive and as soon as you start pedaling it takes off or a little bit more subtle to give you a little more of a workout is that right yes yes so you have uh, infinite possibilities when it comes to torque sensor operation right so you can you can have for example a fair if you are a fairly expert rider mm -hmm. right then you use certain settings if you are uh, a beginner rider Right. Uh, then you use a certain setting, right? And if you are in between, then you basically use it, you know that set of settings. So mm -hmm. it allows you to fine tune the the the, ri the riding performance uh, as per your your level of uh, you know expertise. Cool, cool. Yeah. And then I I liked. Um, let's see. There's this thing, torque sensor details. Was that yeah, the other one? Yeah. So this one here, what it is showing you is showing you actually the speed, the voltage, the temperature, and the haul cord. Now this is mainly for diagnostic purposes that if, if you have an issue with the haul sensors, it'll show up here. Okay. Uh, right, and then you have the temperature, voltage, and speed. Now here, when you click on torque sensor details, it will read you the torque sensor details. I see. Right, and essentially, these four parameters is what we process. It's showing zero, zero here because there's no torque sensor on this particular motor. Oh, I see. But yeah. it, it will basically, uh, show you f uh, uh, this value all the time, and then as you begin to pedal, these values, rectified, peak value, actual values, this is the value on which the motor acts. Okay. You know, so there's a lot of processing going on in between when you begin to process the information. You know, our motor is capable of knowing its own torque. Right. And the torque of the human or the rider. And it separates those so that it's going to be more responsive and not get 
right. <laughs> carried away with its own torque. I yes, guess. yes. So we have, you know, we, we spent a good amount of uh, years trying to figure out the torque sensor. Hmm. And this was, we did a fair amount of research and we, we studied how the crank profile, you know, when you're cranking, how exactly the profile uh, actually uh, it develops. Right. So we capture that profile precisely and then we begin to separate the components. Got it. Right. And then when we know precisely the rider torque, then we read that input and then, you know, activate the motor accordingly. Can you give me an example of how you would dial this in for a climbing application? Like so, you... so let's see here. So you have got, uh, you know, a uh, number of parameters you can set. Okay. Right. So first thing is you have a sensor selection. We have got ability to have uh, the, the, the uh, first configuration here, TS plus CS plus TH, is essentially uh, throttle takes over uh, crank sensor and crank sensor takes over torque sensor, right? I see. If you don't have crank sensor or throttle, then automatically it runs from torque sensor, cool. right? So either three of the sensors can be used to run the drive. Right. right? Oh, and that's cool because again, this is modular. So if you got the very, very most basic Falco kit where it was just a torque sensing motor and just the battery, well, basically it would say, okay, torque sensor, that's the lowest level input that it looks for. You, and you don't even need a throttle. You don't need the, the display. Right. It that's just, right. it works. Like you get yes. on, you pedal. And then that's where this software comes in because you might, you might want to turn down the sensitivity or, or turn it up. You might want to configure your motor to be higher torque because you're climbing a lot. Right. 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 Yeah. So yeah, go, go on, go on. This is yeah. cool. So he, here, so, so for example, if you are a very, you know, if you're an expert rider, mm -hmm. right, then you, you, uh, one of the uh, requirements for the expert rider is that I want to use more of my energy. Right. And I want to have less of assistance from my motor. I do want assistance, yeah. but I don't want a ton of assistance. Right. right. I don't want the motor to overpower me. Mm -hmm. Right. So the way to do that, let's say I'm on, I'm, I'm Armstrong and I'm actually getting into my 50s or 60s and I now I still continue to ride for a long time. Right. Right. I still want to maintain my health or fitness level, but I don't want ton of assistance from motor. Yeah. Right. So the way to do that is you basically uh, uh, increase this value. As you increase this value. Max TS. Max TS value, you're able to lower the motor assistance and increase the range of the batteries. Okay. As well. Right. Well, that's that's really cool. You know, this is something I hear about, like e Easy Motion. They have the Neo line of bikes, and for a while, this is 2014, by the way. So they're you know they're adjusting it, but just to give you some time frame, the 2013 models um, on Eco mode, which is their lowest level of pedal assist, mm -hmm. it was too much. You know, people would pedal and it would go ring, and it was using the battery, and it was. You know, so they're trying to respond, but with your kit, you can you can change it yourself. Yes. Yeah, yes. and you yes. can keep that if you want it to be very responsive. You right. could set it that way. Yes. Yes. So so if if let's say now if I am if I am somebody who is who is well into the into the 90s, mm -hmm. right? Now I want to use more of a motor assistance, right? If I'm well in the 90s and I'm, I, I want to use more of a motor assistance, then what you do is you basically dial this down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can dial to one. Now the drive becomes extremely responsive, yeah, and it gives you a whole lot more power for your pedal uh, pedal action. I see. What are, just real quickly? So turn on speed. So what does that mean? Like so, turn on speed allows you to tell the motor when the torque sensor you turn on. Okay. Right. So you could adjust that speed from anywhere from essentially uh, 10 RPM all the way up to 150 RPM. Oh, interesting. So some people would like the torque sensor to come on after some time. Some mm -hmm. people would like the, tor the torque sensor to come on right away. More immediately, yeah. Right? So it's again, depending upon your riding level, you know, uh, whether you're, you're a beginner rider or you're an expert rider, people have their preference. Sure. And the other ones, real quick, it's like base activation current. So this is, this is basically, uh, again, uh, when the torque sensor turns on, this is the base we have got 14 levels of torque you can have, hmm. right? So if, if it turns on, if you're zero, it'll basically get a slow ramp. If you make it three or four, it's like a push, right? Big push. So you can basically tell 
as the torque sensor comes on, how much of a push you want. I see. Yeah, yeah. And whether it's going to be like kind of almost more jerky or that, that slower sort right. of smooth. Right. Okay. And then flip. We talked about that. So if your motor, you could basically flip the axle and it would change which direction the torque was pulling from. That's right. That's right. So it, it allows you, uh, there's only one way to install the motor and uh, there's a red mark on the axle which has to face backwards. I now see. sometimes people make a, make a mistake in installing it. So this allows you to correct that mistake without having to physically, physically change, it. change it. See, that's neat. I mean, this is pretty, you know, in depth and torque sensor turn on value. So that's again, how, um, how much the torque you're getting. Yeah. So again, you know, if, if, if I am, uh, if I'm, I'm, you know, a expert rider, I may say, well, I want that motor turn on when I'm applying 20 or 30 Newton meter of torque. I see. Right. And, and whereas if, if, if my knees hurt, yeah. Right. Then I say, well, I really want the assistance to come on faster. So I'll have the turn on value to be lower. Man. So you could really dial it in where it's like, if I'm pedaling lightly, like the motor doesn't even nothing. And then right. if I, and then, but if I'm climbing a hill, it recognizes that and that would extend your battery. That's like right. you're saying, that's, right. that's, right. that's cool. Okay. Current clamp. So now these options, the clamps uh, are not available in this version. Basically we have five levels of assistance mm -hmm. and we have ability to, uh, uh, to clamp the assistance in each level. Okay. So that allows again, a fairly good battery optimization, right? Sure. So with the clamps, you know, plus one level, you could have a fairly long range with the clamp. So now hmm. with the, the, the latest firmware version we have, we have clamps. And the next firmware version which we will release, the clamps will be adjustable by the, by the, uh, by the users. Interesting. Okay, yeah, and that's like basically the power that's being output. Right. When you, right. When you add turn on delay. Real quick. So, so again, the turn on delay is, again, as you begin to pedal, essentially 30 counts, uh, basically each oh. count uh, represents a certain amount of delay. You know, it's a, it's a, a and that's for the crank sensor. That's for the torque sensor, basically. Oh, really. for the torque sensor. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. So all of this is really for the, for the torque sensor settings. Okay. Right? And again, we're in the motor control tab. So, okay. I, I get it. The reason I, I mention uh, the crank there is because, you know, you guys have 12 magnets. It's pretty yes. sensitive. Um, going to respond more quickly. But what you're saying is you can purposefully delay how quickly the torque sensor activates. That's right. That's okay. Right. That's right. And then again, the turn off delay. So see, uh, one of the beauty of our technology is it is adaptive. Mm -hmm. So it basically knows when the rider is not able to deliver torque. Hmm. And, and as, as your speed increases, rider's ability to deliver torque goes down. I see. Right? Yeah. Power may go up, but the rider's ability to deliver torque goes down. Because you, you got to change gears and you might, it might be outpacing you. So you're, you're trying to keep up and your, your torque is dropping off slowly. And That's so right. you can delay how that happens. So actually the motor compensates automatically, mm -hmm. right? Motor compensates automatically that, that lack of torque by the rider, hmm. right? And then what happens is you can also control uh, how long does it take for the torque sensor to go to go off? So as you're riding it, so the delay essentially goes longer as you're riding faster. I see. Right. Yeah. So you can adjust that according to your preference how it, it is because it's automatically compensating you for lack of torque. Mm -hmm. But you can also do further adjustments using this turn off delay. Interesting. Okay. And then. TS offset value because the first thing we looked at was max TS and what was that again? That was like so max TS value allows you to really uh, extend the range of the torque sensing, hmm. right? So if if I am again an expert rider, I may have torque sensing range up to 200 newton meters. Yeah, wow. But if I am a beginning rider, I may have a torque sensing range of up, only up to 50 newton oh. meters. Oh, so right? you increase the the range of you ex yeah expand you the range. <laughs> yeah, you span the range as per the rider's preference. Interesting. Right? So you, that would, I, I get it. So if your range is, is really wide, yeah. that means that the torque sensor is sort of sensitive in between those versus if it's narrow, it's just sort it's a more like on or off. And that's right. the more basic rider that's right. that we were talking that's about. Right. Okay. Right. And then the torque sensor offset value, this is to adjust for different dropouts, hmm. right? So you basically, if you have a vertical dropout, there's no offset, but if you have 
you know, 15 degree offset or 22 degree offset, no. then you have to adjust the offset so the torque sensor can calibrate properly at startup. And this is, again, this is advanced stuff. Like it's easy to take for granted, like, okay, it's a bicycle, but what you're talking about here is this right here, right. the dropout and see sort of the angle of that. Some go straight down, some are like this. If you had a belt drive, for example, right. they have a different kind of a dropout. Correct. And so you can actually configure that. And right. so, yeah, I mean, this is, it becomes, that's what I mean, like pretty, pretty high quality. There's a lot here that you can experiment with to make your own, you know, high-end high electric bike. Yeah, I mean, you can really, the, the idea is to customize, to make it precisely as you would like the bike to feel. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the idea behind it. Very cool. Uh, and then ref speed, reference speed? Yeah, so these uh, cl current clamp, reference speed, and, and this table here is, you know, our future version of the, of the software. Okay, we're looking at the future. That was the other thing. Um, shops, usually your dealers, they have this cable, which actually allows you to, to update the, the firmware directly on the, right. the motor. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as we have got new versions of the firmware available, then that is what this uh, this uh, will allow you to do. This is essentially a simple uh, uh, USB to RS two thirty two, you know, connector. And then you have got this one. This goes to the motor. This is basically the programmer. Oh, I see. And and you can hook these two together, and this will go to your PC, right? You can and then this will go to your motor, right? And then you can program the motor using this uh, this uh, here. That's cool. Now, I think something that a lot of people are excited about, um, sort of the end user, is making their make, making the motor go faster than 20 miles per hour. And what I learned today was that it's, there are two, two kits really. One that is strictly street legal, 20 mile per hour limit in the USA. That's and right. you can't over, you can't overdrive that. You can't change the software, the firmware, anything. Right. You're kind of, that's it. And then there's the other kit, which does let you overcome that. And I did this in the, the reviews, but basically there's the, you know, these two buttons here, plus and minus, and they let you turn up or turn down um, the assistance level. If you press and hold them both in for a second and let go, that would take you into cruise mode, right? right? So cruise mode is, you know, faster than 20 miles per hour. I just wanted to make that point because, you know, if you, if you got the 20 mile per hour limited one, um, you might be, you, you're kind of, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. Right. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, uh, a lot of riders, I, you know, again, we, we, we cover, uh, you know, expert riders also. Mm -hmm. And then when they are driving, you know, they want to drive higher than 20 miles per hour. Sure. They, they would like to be able to maintain their fitness level. And so, so there they can go higher than 20 miles per hour and still have the assistance as they please. Sure. You know, instead of having a brute force assistance. And it still has that 20 mile per hour, you know, non-cruise mode, which okay. limits you at 20. So that's like street legal, you're riding around, everything's fine. And then for sort of the off-road or private use, yeah. then you've got those higher speeds. Yeah. So yeah. again, thank you for the clarification on that. Yeah, Cause no it's just, you have so many options. It's really neat that you can dial it in as a user. And at the same time, it can get a little bit confusing. Um, so. Those are, I just wanted to point that out. Here's the, the dongle for shops. Here's the $50 USB wireless adapter that, that end users can get yes. and use this software in demo mode. And then here's the display. So that was the first thing we connected with. That's this first tab, basically like diagnostic. And yes, you can, you can like operate it remotely. That's kind of cool. But again, there's not much you can change. It's more just um, yeah. Diagnostic. Yeah, yeah, yes. So there, there is, yeah, there is an inbuilt diagnostic tool in here. Mm -hmm. So there are basically, this will serve, you know, uh, three purposes, right? One purpose is that you can do, uh, customize your torque sensor behavior, right? Second is for diagnostic. And third one is, which is still evolving, is you can also use as a fitness machine inside your house. Intr okay. And that's like, within this, are you getting to this? This? Yes. Yeah. So this is basically the and plus heart rate sensor this is wahoo uh, you can use any brand and plus heart rate sensor and you essentially can link up to the software here or with the console so right? ant plus is a wireless technology that allows your lcd computer or your computer to communicate with a heart rate monitor yes. and essentially give you feedback on your fitness level right. so if you had this set up in a track stand at home yes. or maybe you were just on a flat surface outside but wanted to know how your body was performing you can get feedback right yes, yes. so you can you basically uh, it's intended that you have regeneration mode you have five regeneration modes and you can 
essentially set it as a fitness machine in the winter months when you're not riding outside, when it's snowing outside. Right. You could set it up as a, win as a fitness machine. You have the heart rate strap, you have the, the software here, right. and you can basically you know, uh, use it as a fitness machine. You have your heart rate being shown, you have your calories being shown. You can use the bicycle now as a full fitness machine. Have you ever heard of the tax trainers? Yes. Right, okay, and they've got like a virtual reality video game thing. Hopefully we'll see more of that in the future, but it, it would be really cool, like what you're talking about, with their machine, I used to, I bought one, it was thousands and thousands of dollars, and it wasn't an electric bike, it was just a little motor that, like, right. resistance on my wheel. So what you guys do, you, you're actually generating electricity. A couple people have asked me, like, is there a way to hook that up to a battery and charge the battery? And, well, you've got a battery for your bike. Um, do you have sensors that make sure it doesn't overcharge the battery? Yes, so we do have, uh, we do have inbuilt protect protection. See, a lot of intelligence is inside the motor, mm -hmm. right? So you have got, a, it will automatically turn off the charging. I see. When it, it, it senses that it's being overcharged. And then it's just sort of, you're just creating heat or whatever, it's just basically. You know, it'll stop, it'll stop the regeneration process and you will not feel any regeneration. Oh, really? Yeah. So for, in order to use regen, you almost have to like down. You, yes, you have to have empty batteries in order to be able to use it. Even if you're, when you're going down the hill, mm -hmm. and if it senses, for example, for a 36 volt battery, above 43 volts, the regeneration stops. And oh. for 48 volt battery, above 56 volt, the regeneration stops. Interesting, and that's, I've heard that in order to maximize the life of batteries, like a lithium battery like this, what you, is the idea to kind of always keep it pretty charged, but never to get fully 100% and never get zero? You yeah, any... I mean, the, the, the batteries, you know, is, is a very imperfect science mm. and it's very organic in nature, you know. So it requires a pretty precise maintenance to be able to have a long, you know, very long battery life. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to keep the batteries charged. We use, we use uh, you know, lithium manganese cells, which are much better to be controlled than any other chemistry. Mm. So, so you operate within those limits then you have got much longer life on the battery. Interesting, and that's what your, you know, the, the smart um, battery sensors right. do. Right. They, they yeah. keep it within those limits. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. That's, that's really cool. Do you, wanna, do you wanna put that thing on or have any more advice or tips about how the system works? Yeah, I think real quick, I wanna show you uh, real quick the diagnostic for the console here. So we're gonna stop this. And if you go back to this tab here and you can disconnect the motor, and, uh, oh, can, so that's the thing is you have to connect with the, the proper thing before you can use right. all of those different tabs. That's right, that's right. So we're gonna disconnect and then we're gonna do this display and then connect. And now we have ability to be able to, uh, here we click on this, now we have ability to be able to diagnose the console. I see. Right, so you hit the start button and then you pair the console uh, uh, with the PC. I see. Right, so that's one part of it. And then uh, if you go back and you stop it, you'll b go back to the tab here, and then you can disconnect this here, and then you have ability to be able to connect to your heart rate sensor. Got it, here. okay. So that was when we were first setting this up, you pick the correct thing, you connect with it, and then you have the options once you're in the menu. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. thanks for the clarification, yeah. Rakesh, yeah. appreciate it. You're most welcome. So here, uh, and then you have this heart rate tab, which is available. Now this is basically you can use it as your fitness, uh, fitness uh, machine, right? Mm -hmm. So here, if you input your uh, your age, height, weight, and you have a bicycle running on a trainer or in a negative modes, now it'll give you your heart rate, your KPH, and then it'll give you your calories burnt, your average heart rate, your ex exercise intensity, your max heart rate. Okay, so you just said on a trainer or with the battery. So if, if your battery was completely charged and you just took it off, you could still ride this just with a regular trainer. Yes. And because it, it generates, the motor generates electricity to send to the wireless receiver, right? Yes. And so that's what's communicating that's the with the computer. Yes. Great, right. so you don't even need the battery on the bike to use, to, to connect, as you, long as no, you're pedaling. No, you don't, yes, you, you can activate it. However, uh, we have inbuilt uh, inbuilt uh, sensors which will detect the lack of battery. I see. So the, the motor will not turn on. Uh, basically, it goes into deactivation mode when it senses lack of battery. If you're just pedaling it, it will sense there is no battery, mm -hmm. right? And it will go deactivation mode. So it senses 
when you hook up the battery, it automatically senses that you do have a battery. So it does need a battery for it to operate. I was almost thinking like if you t took the battery off and you were charging it in yes. the corner and then you were using this with the heart rate, would that work? No. It wouldn't work because, okay, so you need the battery you, on you for that. The battery. And then basically you're charging the battery. <laughs> so yes. there you go. You, you become the wall. Yes. Um, okay, cool. That's awesome. Well, it feels like we've gotten a good overview of it. This is a pretty cool system, Rakesh. I appreciate you, you know, showing how everything works and, and walking through it. Again, you know, we're on a PC, but you could use it with Parallels or Bootcamp. On Windows, there's the little, you know, all these different accessories. And what's, what's the best way to get these? You know, do, do you sell them through your website? or? Yeah, I mean, we have got uh, dealers uh, set up, but we have got a few dealers set up in the United States. And then we also have the electricbicycleworld.com which is our, uh, essentially the uh, retail. Uh, like the e-commerce site? Yeah, okay. The e -commerce site. Great, great. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again for going through all this with us. You're most <laughs>